Hey guys, welcome to the first episode of Rick Reviews. In this episode, we're going to look at the Explore Track New Zealand's Land Cruiser 79 and all the modifications that I've done to the vehicle. It is a 2019 Toyota Land Cruiser 79 4.5 litre turbo diesel, the legendary 1VD FTE motor. So, what did I set this vehicle up for? I set up my 79 exclusively for touring and camping. Everything on the vehicle is geared towards making the experience of camp setup and teardown as quick and as easy as possible. Let's start with the front end. This is the second bull bar on the truck. The first bull bar was a disaster. Shortly after the first bar, I ordered the ARB Deluxe bull bar. Um, I'm very happy with the ARB product and in the future, I would rather pay the premium for the ARB product. It's just superior, fits great and with excellent instructions on how to fit it. I ordered the ARB brush bars and side steps at the same time I ordered the bull bar. Winch wise, I've gone for a Runbar 11 XP 12 volt premium winch with synthetic rope. Thus far, it pulled me out of a bog one up in the rock and pillar ranges and I've also pulled old mate out of some soft sand up at the Rapiro beach. At the same time I bought the ARB boo uh, bar work I bought the ARB radiator bash plate. I originally had superior engineering recovery points fitted on both sides. Unfortunately it did not work with the ARB bash plate. Took those off and put on an ARB recovery point. At the back I fitted Heyman Rees tow bar which contains the three um, built-in recovery points. Excellent tow bar. Only problem I have it hangs a little bit low at the back so going through riverbeds and stuff sometimes it heats on the back on the rocks and stuff and I've kind of bent some bash plates. I've replaced the original raised air intake on that side that comes standard with the Land Cruiser with a TJM AirTech snorkel. It's been good we've tested that snorkel um, it's not a restriction when we got the car tuned and definitely it breathes pretty well. In terms of lights and com, steady spotlights and the fog lights are also steady fog lights with daylight running light around the, the edges. I used to have four work lights on the roof. Unfortunately, I found they didn't suit the purpose. They were way too strong, 20 watters, and they light up the sides great, but they were just completely overpowering in camp. So and on top of that they're white so they attract a lot of bugs and stuff so I took them off. I've got my eye on something to actually um, replace them with a nice amber light. In terms of comms I run the uh, GME XRS 330C. It's a great little unit. Got it um, fitted in the uh, roof console and it's it's been working great. And on top I've got the 2.1 GME antenna. You can see there's some leaves in there with a rhino rack uh, swivel bracket to hold it all. I'm currently running 315 75 16 Maxxis Razor mud terrain tires which equates to 34.6 inches in old money. I really like the Maxxis Razor tires quite a lot. Um, they are super quiet and I've never had any issues with punctures and uh, the side walls has been solid and I would consider buying them again in the future. Suspension wise I'm running the Terrain Tamer kit with the parabolic leaves. At the time I installed a three inch extended braided hoses and upgraded the brake booster to the J-Max double diaphragm brake booster. The double diaphragm brake booster upgrade is a must on the 70 series. You can actually now get the front wheels to lock up when you disable the ABS on tarmac. I decided to run the Oldman Emu BP51 remote reservoir shocks as you can see at the, at the top there. They are expensive but oh my god they are worth the money probably the best shock I've ever had on a vehicle at the time I was running the superior gen 1 high clearance plate with the leaf springs the leaf spring hangers at the bottom giving you um, it's a great upgrade to improve your leaf spring hanger clearance especially on 70 series with the leaf springs underneath the diff when I got the service body I've upgraded the parabolic leaves from uh, three, 300 to 500 kg constant loads to basically I ran those um, when I had the little alley tray from Toyota on there so what I did is I actually replaced it with 500 to 700 kg constant load um, parabolic leaves. I've also installed Trundle's heavy duty caster corrected radius arms that is longer and they push the front axle back into the standard position. The radius arms helped a lot with, with fitting the 35 inch tires. I don't have any rubbing back on the guard here like I had with the standard arms and the uh, caster correction bushes. I also installed uh, adjustable pan out rod and extended bump stops all through. Finally 
see at the back I replaced the rear diff housing with a DWIS housing, widening the rear uh, track and fixing the major e track issue with, with the 79s. I'm running the Rhino Rack um, Pioneer platform on shorter legs, as you can see here. It's the 10 centimeter leg, keeps the roof rack close to the roof. Minimal space between the roof rack and the, the roof. It looks great, but with some challenges. The space between the roof and the roof rack is small, that um, you struggle to wash underneath. First world problems, eh? I replaced the standard mirrors with the Clearview powerful towing mirrors. Um, the Clearviews um, are great for vision, but it has its drawbacks. Um, on narrow tracks, um, it, seem, you know, it seems to, to hit branches and all sorts, um, so you have to be careful. I store my Max tracks on the roof rack, currently with a Rhino rack bracket. Hopefully soon I'll change that setup. The same goes for the aerial, the shovel holder and the land anchor. They're all Rhino rack uh, brackets that I've used. Uh, the land anchor brackets are actually uh, Rhino rack high lift brackets that I've modified to work with the land tanker. I do have a high lift deck which uh, normally carry on the roof but well it doesn't fit with what I've got on there so I need to make some modifications and reconfigure stuff so that I can actually have that on there as well. <laughs> When you open the bonnet, probably the first thing you'll notice is the bonnet struts. Uh, they are great for assisting and lifting the hunk of steel covering the engine bay. Some people might disagree that the shiny big airbox is the first thing you notice. I've replaced the standard Toyota airbox with a Patrol Doctor 4 inch high flow airbox. It's a great bit of kit and it uses a 200 series filter element which gives you bigger uh, filter area. I run the Unifilter foam filter which uh, I clean and re-oil every 5000 Ks. One of the first mods I did to the cruiser after I bought it was to fit a Direction Plus secondary pre-filter and a probing catch can. The Direction Plus um, pre-filter comes with a water warning system and will alert you if in, in the cabin if you um, if there's detects any water in the fuel. Right next to the pre-filter um, catch can is the, well the catch can here, but the Racecraft diff breather kit. I've extended the diff breathers on both the locker actuator motors and the, the diff and the gearbox and the transfer case and it all comes up here. I have one open port I want to use for the winch. This cruiser being a DPF model, I opted for the Torque 3.5 inch DPF back exhaust system. The build quality is pretty good but if I have to do it again I I'd go a different route. There's some nicer uh, exhaust that I've seen out there. When I got the vehicle tuned by Chris Trundle in New Plymouth, his workshop fitted a NPC 1300 Newton meter clutch to handle the additional power. I was very happy with the work and the tune and in the future I would go back for any performance work but at this stage I'm happy with, with the performance right now and probably won't upgrade anything. On the other side of the engine bay uh, you can see the PDB dual battery holder setup and uh, Century deep cycle battery. It's it's a great DIY kit and it comes with a Red Arc BC DC 1225D which is sold already. The wiring that you get with the kit is all professionally done and the fitment of the battery tray was fairly easy. Also the instructions were really good with color pictures and very easy to follow. The kit comes with the Red Arc isolator and momentary switch. When pressed you link both batteries, the primary and the secondary battery together. This is great for if you have a flat primary battery and you need to jump start the car. I also have a 200 amp uh, rapid power uh, brushless water cooled alternator and a red winch Albright winch isolator solenoid that's on the list for me to still fit to the vehicle. Just haven't had time yet. The winch isolator solenoid to replace the manual uh, isolator and enable me to activate the winch power from inside the cab. In terms of the alternator, it's a common problem on the 70 series to develop charging problems when you're doing a lot of water cross or the occasional bog hole since the position of the alternator is right at the bottom of the engine bay. The 200 amp sealed alternator upgrade is to future proof the vehicle's electrical system against this issue and possibly in the future I might add a, an additional 40 amp DC to DC charger to bump the amps to the, the house battery bank. Land Pirates and Fung Array built a um, custom integrated service body for me. I'd work with them again in a heartbeat. Uh, Kelly and her husband were a pleasure to work with. The service body is painted with Raptor liner. Below the canopy I have a 50 litre water tank that is gravity fed and also has a 12 volt pump on it if I need to spray something down. On each side is lockable storage boxes. On this side I keep, actually on the other side I keep some fluids. This side is where the water pump's housed and it's just general storage. 
storage. On the back, I have a tire carrier holder and a ladder designed to hold a two kilogram gas bottle. I also have a sizable trundle drawer that store my gas cooker, recovery gear, and some tools in it. All of the doors is lockable, but the two side doors is uh, central locked with the car. I've made the passenger side my kitchen cooking area. For shade and protection from the sun, I'm running Easy On Bat 270. The awning is great, has great coverage, but what I love most about is the easy and quick setup and of the awning. I did have an Adventure Kings 2x3 meter awning before. I ran that for about two years and it worked perfectly fine. It's actually still in my shed. Let's have a look inside the canopy. For camp lights, I'm using the hardcore LED light. They can do white and amber and it has worked great so far. I've opted for the Iseco um, 85 liter fridge, the upright uh, fridge freezer. The freezer is really small, but you know, it's good for, for some ice cream and a packet of meat or something. Moving along, next to the fridge, I have pull out pantry with the travel body 12 volt portable oven and the Red Vision display. I've upgraded the travel body door to an insulated door and also bought stainless steel tray and trivet from Summerville Metalworks. The travel buddy is one of my most favorite camp upgrades I've done. Absolutely love the buddy and it pretty much every day I cook my dinner with it when we're camping. The Red uh, Vision in info display control basically the travel buddy, the water pump, power to the rooftop tent and the fridge which is constantly on. The additional channels I've connected to outlets on the other side, I'll show you that. I have three auxiliary 10 amp Siggy plugs and three 30 amp Anderson plugs on the other side. And next to the pull out pantry I have a drawer containing all my cooking and cutlery and at the bottom of the drawer there's a table that you can and pull out uh, and open the lid. This is where I store the induction cooker and um, some other odds and ends. Oh yeah, above the fridge, I fitted the Manager 30 and the 2000 uh, watt inner drive inverter. Manager 30 is basically the charging system that keeps everything in the canopy charged up. The 2000 inverter supplies power to two GPOs, one at the back wall here and one on the other side by the charging station. When you're on the kitchen side, you can turn the inverter on using the button on the face plate. When on the other side, the remote switch that you can use to turn on the inverter. Let's move around to the driver side and I can show you the storage side of the canopy. This is the storage side. I have the same hardcore LED lights um, on this side. Let's start to look at the back. You can see the Red Vision um, control box on the wall there. Below the, the box we have an additional auxiliary output I talked about. Uh, three times 10 amp and three times 30 amp Andersons. Then on the front wall I have a fuse box supplying power to all of the um, charging outputs outlets at the bottom of the front wall. The outlet is a mix of SIGI, USB and USB-C outlet. Above the outlet is the GPO and right next to the GPO is the remote on-off switch for the inverter. I've also got a solar input here in the front of the, the drawer here. Not too happy with the position afterwards I uh, realized it's probably in a really horrible position but anyway that's the way I designed it. Below the top of this charging station I have a drawer. This drawer is mainly used for camera gear and so forth and below the drawer I've got two 200 amp hour lithium batteries. Just below the drawer is a storage area mainly used for spares and tools I don't need often and then next to the charging station I have a drawer with a pull out table which is this boy here. The drawer has electrical spares in it as well as my drone box. The pull out table below the drawer has a lift top and inside I've got all you know like GoPro type accessories and stuff for my camera. The final drawer at the back of the canopy is used for tools which I store at the back and then the front is for general camp storage. On the back wall I've built the storage recess pocket because I wanted the wall to be fitted flush with the edge of the door frame so that the drawers won't hit the gas struts when you open them. There's about a 50 mil gap between the outer shell of the canopy and the wall hence why I did the recess pocket. Just gives us a little bit of extra storage and I used the dead space behind the wall. When I built them, I wasn't I wasn't sure. I didn't have a plan exactly what I'm gonna store in these pockets, but at this point it's come in handy. I'm storing most of my pump accessories, UHA handheld, and all sorts in there. Unfortunately, the front wall was already done by the time, so I couldn't add similar storage um, bins in there. On top of the canopy, I've got an easy on blade 
rooftop tent. It's been a game changer in terms of comfort, convenience, and ease of setup. Above the, the drawers, I put the storage area, and in there, there's these, you know, little hooks that you can move around, you know, for tying down, like um, I've got my uh, electric chainsaw all tied down here. Um, and it's just a, a nice way. So there's four of those, two in the front, longer ones, and two shorter ones on the side. It works quite well. These little black things here is just PVC pipe. I, I painted black. It is it's actually fantastic because, you know, I want to charge these, pop it in there, hook up the cable, and they can charge. I'll start the tour of the cab with the Tecla Signature Range seat covers. Tecla is a South African company that focuses on the making of interior cabin accessories like seat covers. Their product fits the seats beautifully and they've proven to be tough and durable. I've completely soundproofed the cabin with car builder soundproofing. That meant taking out the seats, carpets, roof lining and door cards, applying a two-stage soundproofing and insulation layer. I've also updated the sound system. I've installed a Kenwood head unit which uh, has Apple CarPlay play as well as Android system. Then I replaced the standard 4-inch speakers in the dash with Sony's 4-inch 3-way coaxial speakers. For the doors I installed the Cruiser Consoles speaker pots and the Sony 6.5-inch 4-way coaxial speakers. Behind the back seat I installed a Pioneer 2000 watt 5-channel amp and a Roxford Fosgate 10-inch slim box subwoofer. So needless to say the Cruiser has a good sound system, especially compared to standard. One of my most favorite upgrades in the cab is the Department of Interior Center console. The center console combined with the one stone armrests make the vehicle super comfortable. I've never had issues with the standard seats like many other people. I quite like them and have no plans on changing them. Under the driver's seat you'll see the PDP compressor tray and ARB twin piston compressor. Again one of those great products from PDP which uses dead space under the front seat. On the roof I installed the four-wheel drive interiors roof console which houses the GME XRS UHF radio. It is an okay spot to fit the radio, only problem is on rough tracks the cable will fall off the hook and then dangle left and right which can be distracting and hit you in the head. The roof console does have a storage bin but honestly I don't use it often. On the right side of the steering wheel I have switches for controlling the clear view mirrors, power fold and adjusting the mirrors as well as a switch for the steady spotlights. Above that is two standard Toyota switches. On the pillar I have a PDP pillar pod with red arc gauges for boost EGT water temp and oil pressure. On the left of the steering wheel I replaced the switch panel containing the ashtray and ciggy lighter with a switch panel from PVS. This new switch panel gives me 11 switch positions. Here I have a battery link momentary switch, the winch power and control switches. In the middle there is fog light switch and on either side work light switches for left and right. I've also installed an EVC throttle controller. I don't really use the auto or ultimate settings as I find the throttle is way too sensitive but I love the Economy 9 when I'm out on the tracks. It makes the throttle nice and doughy which helps so much with smoothing out those small movements in your foot when you're on very bumpy ground. What are your top three mods you've done on the vehicle? I would say uh, for me the top mod is the cruiser console's floor console on the middle. You know you've got a nice little armrest you can put your arm on and it's just yeah it made such a difference in terms of the comfort when doing long distance driving. For me that's number one. Number two terrain tamer suspension especially the parabolic leaves. Standard suspension in a cruiser feels like there's a donkey kicking you in the back of your lower back. It is the most horrible suspension I've ever driven in. Put the terrain tamer suspension in, fantastic. That heat on the back is gone. One of the probably the best mods as well I've done. And number three I must say for me the travel buddy. You know being able to just put your dinner in at uh, one o'clock, two o'clock when you're out on the tracks get to camp, you set up camp quickly, pull the travel buddy out, dinner is ready, you can just sit down and have your dinner and enjoy camp. That for me is the three, three best mods I've done on this cruiser. What is the one thing you must have when you're out touring? Definitely, you know, if you don't have it, you'll know about it, a camp chair. That's definitely one thing you don't want to forget. Why did you choose this vehicle? Well, you know, as a young fellow in South Africa when I was growing up, um, 17, 18 years old, we used to drive the old Land Cruiser 75s on the farms, and um, I, I just, I just loved it. I always, always enjoyed it. 
Um, but I always kind of thought about it as, man, it's a lot of money to spend. That is, you know, just quite a lot of money. Anyway, I'm quite a bit older now, so I thought, hell, man, why not? You've always wanted one, just get one and enjoy it for what it is. What is your top three trips you've done in this vehicle? Um, for me, number one, Otiaki Conservation Area. Um, Johnson's Creek track, Mount Buster track, uh, Mount Keeban track. Uh, I absolutely love the area. Uh, number two, I would say uh, from Nun Eden over the Lammermoor Ranges, um, Gardner's track, and then um, Old Dunstan track in the big storm um, that hit Otago in to December 2020. That was um, an amazing day. We thought we were not going to see civilization again. Um, fantastic. Uh, number three, I would say Godly Valley with the uh, Glacier Lake. Um, I've been down there twice now, the first time um, on a solo trip and, um, you know, it was quite easy. The second time, about three months later, I took a group of four vehicles down, um, the track was gone. Uh, we, we had to basically scout on foot to find out where we could drive and how to get up the valley. But man, was it fun. What's the worst thing about your vehicle? For me, the worst thing is, you know, for a 79 being top heavy standard, and then on top of that, I've got a rooftop tent on top and it's lifted and all of that. Um, when you're on tracks which is off camber, it is very unsettling and, you know, it scares you quite sometimes. Um, but at this point, I know the vehicle, I know how far I can push it, and, um, you know, I'm quite enjoying it. I'd like to put a call out. If you would like to have your four-wheel drive featured on Rick Reviews, then please get in contact with me. What I am looking for? Well, any road registered four-wheel drive used for camping, hunting, and tough tracks. I'd like to showcase the four-wheel drive culture in New Zealand and how we modify our four-wheel drive specific to the New Zealand conditions. I'm in Canterbury region. If you don't live near my, we could always make a plan. Maybe a weekend trip to your backyard where you can show me your favorite local spots and we can shoot your Rick review. Or your next trip to the South Island, we can catch up and shoot your pride and joy. Like I said, please get in contact with me via direct message on Facebook or Instagram or email. I've provided details below in the video description.